There's evidence that the lives of some women in Afghanistan are starting to get better, despite a recent report which paints a bleak picture. According to the charity the Thomson Reuters Foundation, dismal health care, desperate poverty and violence makes the country the most dangerous in the world for women. And challenging entrenched views can prove risky, if not fatal. But as Charlotte Cross reports, some inspirational figures are blazing a trail in politics and the world of work. Female journalists running their own commercial radio station in Helmand's capital, Lashkagar. Muska Radio is three years old. It's a dedicated women's station broadcasting news as well as factual programmes on themes like cookery and health. It's won national awards and has a big following. Helmand is a patriarchal society and women rarely have the opportunity to work. They've had to overcome huge prejudice just for the right to make radio programmes and read the news. It used to be unusual for women to work and we didn't have the right to education. After the Taliban regime ended, we got lots of new opportunities and fortunately I completed my education and started working. This is my message to other women. I say to them, the Taliban regime has ended and we are a developed nation, so women shouldn't stay inside the home. They can come outside and work as well. For these women, it's a fact of life that many men in Helmand still share the Taliban's extreme views on women's rights. Since the Taliban, there have been lots of changes in Helmand, but still there are lots of women who can't go outside their homes without permission from their families. So while there have been lots of changes, in some areas, nothing has changed. Not far away, situated alongside the majestic Helmand River, is the Provincial Community Council, Helmand's seat of local government. Nowhere is the shift of power for Helmand's women more evident than it is here. Of the 33 council members, four are women. But for them, it's dangerous work. In recent years, insurgents have ruthlessly assassinated many women in such positions of power. <laughs> We have a lot of security concerns and we fear for our safety. Before, when we were first elected to the provincial council, we used to get lots of threatening letters and warnings. There were even plans in place to murder us, but we're moving forward. There are still threats made against us and we receive warnings by phone, but with God's help we carry on with our work. May God save us. The female councillors act as a voice for all women across Helmand, fighting problems like domestic violence and forced marriages. They go out into the districts and speak to the elders, working hard to change attitudes in this male-dominated society. There are two groups of women in Helmand. There are those who live in the cities and those who live in the countryside. The problems they face are traditional. For example, forced marriage. Often the girls are very young, just 10 years old, when the family forced them to marry. We are working to stop these things happening. In the cities, much has changed. Girls are educated and there are fewer problems. At the Department of Women's Affairs, one of those projects is in full swing. Women can come here in safety to work. These women are running their own tailoring business, making clothes to sell with the help of government-funded sewing machines. Fauzia Ulumi heads up the department. I first met her in 2006. Back then, she was terrified for her life, even hiding her handbag under her burqa in case the Taliban recognised it and attacked her. Today, her department is housed in a brand new building and she has a whole team running women's projects across the province. There have been lots of changes for women in the last few years, especially in the fields of education, health and women's rights. Girls are going to school and new schools are opening in the districts. Women can work nowadays, women are coming out of their homes and into society. Women have lots of opportunities now. Fauzia has lived in Helmand all her life. She witnessed the brutality of the Taliban regime. That motivates her to continue fighting for women's rights. These women are risking everything for the chance of a better life, for women across Helmand, for themselves and for their daughters. Charlotte Cross, Forces News, Lashkagar.